So the Bears last year uh, opened seven and three, correct? And Rick, you'll obviously correct me where, where I make a mistake here. Bears opened seven and three. What did they finish last year? Eight and eight. Uh, they were abysmal because of injuries. So right. yeah, now, and, yeah, and eight. included an injury to Cutler. Yes, and Cutler and Forte. Right. So you can. So their entire offense is gone. Right. Pre Brandon Marsh. And they made a change of general manager because last year they they clearly did not have the depth to sustain injuries. Nobody can sustain injuries at a certain level in the NFL, but everybody knows you you got to have a lot of good players, and the Bears seemed ill-prepared, particularly ill-prepared for injury last year, and they made a GM change. But he kept the coach. He kept Lovey Smith. This year, uh, last year opened 7-3, and three, but they weren't that impressive at 7-3, and three, if I'm recalling correctly last year. They're never impressive when they have a winning record. But You're always skeptical of the Bears. That said, this year they opened 7-1, and one, and they seemed better. It seemed like a better shot, but here they are. They find themselves uh, at eight and five. They lost Cutler for a game and a half in that, uh, but he's back. So let me start with you, Rick. What uh, what is wrong, and are they going to make the playoffs? No, they're not going to make the playoffs. What's wrong? Erlacher hasn't been the same linebacker he has been in years past. He can't cut. He's missing tackles. Do you think it's Jenny McCarthy? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> By the way, I can't believe I know. Are they dating? Am no, they're done. they're they, done. They've been done for... Oh. So you, you half knew. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm late to it. Yeah. That's too bad. That seemed like a lovely couple. I always like her locker. He always, and not just because of the reasons that the announcers like him. I like him because all the other players appear to like him. But, I mean, he, he's not the same. They got hit with injuries once again. It seems like Cutler probably had a concussion. Offensive line play has been awful once again. Right. So, for, I mean, it goes to well, kind let, of let, what let, you let, said. There's no preparation. And, you know, the Packers can overcome these horrible injuries at huge positions and then to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. The Bears are not even close well, to that something caliber. something that I want to talk about regarding the Bears. Here's the why the Bears are in trouble. Mike Tice is in a position of responsibility. The idea, he's the offensive coordinator. He had never called plays prior to getting is this his first year or his second year first first year first year was Martz there last year yes Mike Martz is a genius no, <laughs> no. he's a genius Mike Tice you knew like I can't even remember now exactly what was wrong when he was a head coach but you knew as Jenk would say on face alone that this guy had no business being in a significant decision-making role in the NFL you just looked at him, you're like, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. And the Vikings would make mistake after mistake after mistake. I mean, he was North Turner and Jim Schwartz. He was, it's just that they got, his, his tenure was relatively brief. I heard some Bear Talk radio guys this morning, and like, they're right. If Mike Mars, if he's your offensive line coach, that's probably fine. Maybe. Mike Tice. Oh, Mike Tice, excuse me. Yeah, Mike Mars. No, Mike Mars. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Tice. <laughs> he'd, have, he'd have linemen running downfield making catches. He's a genius. <laughs> A genius. Mike Tice, so he shouldn't be in this decision-making uh, So you're basing position. it. And maybe not even as the offensive line coach because that's his thing. And no, he Bears, should be offensive line coach. They can't, but they can't protect the guy. I mean, how long? But they had some of their best seasons protecting Cutler. And it's been since, what, 2000, 2010 that they have had Cutler. 2009, excuse this me. This is his fourth year. Yes, 2009. And they had some of their best years protecting him when Tice was the offensive line coach. Okay. All right, I, fine, acceptable job. No, that's, that's the only thing he should have responsibility um, of. Because you can't, if you're the Bears, you got a quarterback who is uh, uh, arguably the most talented guy ever to be the quarterback for the Bears. And you have unquestionably the best wide receiver the Bears have ever had, yeah. by far. Well, Curtis Conway is up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Galt, sorry. Bernard Berrien's uh, up right, there. Bernard Berrien was pretty good there for a couple of years. That's a fun game, Bear wide receivers. And you have not the best running back the Bears have ever had, but a very good NFL running back. And this offense should not be down 21-7 with a minute 50 to play against the Vikings. Well, it was two interceptions that cost them. I mean, it was, it was the one in the first quarter when obviously the Vikings capitalized. They ruled him down at the five. And then it was just a clear overthrow of, I believe, Brandon Marshall and Harrison Smith ran it back for a touchdown. There were two mistakes in that game that cost them. Many other things, aside from offensive line play that cost them, was drop passes left and right. Kellen Davis was dropping, dropping passes. It was, a, it was a 21-7 game, yet I felt like it was... It was a seven-point game because the Bears, after the first quarter, just dominated that. They outgained the Vikings 438 to 248. Frequently losing teams outgain the winning teams in the NFL because of the junk that happens at the end of games. But not by 200 yards. No. Like the it, Bears kind of dominated that game. Devin Hester, you know, there's like, there's about three-something minutes left. 
uh, maybe maybe a little under three. Hester's in the slot. He runs right over the middle. He is wide open and drops the ball to run it in for a touchdown. I mean, it's just it's the microcosm of his career. Kellen Davis is a yeah, shitty we, ass tight end. He drops passes. On Devin Hester as an offensive player. I think we're ready. Yeah, yeah. I mean, enough. Has he made one dramatic play on offense? They can cut the cord with Devin Hester this year. Too many drop passes. Like Alshon Jeffrey, who got away with a clear offensive pass interference in the third quarter. A catch that you absolutely need to make. He drops a touchdown pass. I mean, it was just that kind of day for the Bears. So it was drop passes. Jay Cutler comes out of the game with a neck. I love the, just the way they describe injuries in the NFL. He got a neck. Jason Campbell came in, threw a total Jay Cutler touchdown pass, too. Kind of sidearmed off his back foot where you just say, Brandon, just help me out. And that was the only time he threw to Brandon Marshall on Is that, that right? drive. Yeah, that was the only time. Every time I watch the Red Zone channel, I look up, it's a Bear quarterback, Cutler or... Uh, Campbell at the end of the game just literally chucking a ball downfield as far as they can and and then Brandon Marshall catches it. This one guy tweeted at a uh, radio host for 670th score in Chicago watching Jay and Marshall with these Bears reminds me of playground football when the two big kids played on our side. Yeah, totally. That's exactly what it was. He just threw it up to, like they threw the ball what 50 times 40 some times between him and Campbell. 51 yeah. 19 targets were to Brandon Marshall. Is that right? Yeah. These guys are good enough. They're good enough that they need to they need to get that offense together. Whether they make, I assume if they make the playoffs, Lovey Smith uh, stays. Uh, but they got it, it, the contingent on him staying. They got to make a change in offensive coordinator. They got to help these guys out. They got to help these guys out.